23. I'm Gianluca Louisa, your host on the Reezy 21. Once again, I'm back. And we have the Logan Paul KSI rematch coming up very soon. In a few days to be exact. I'm going to be staying up or getting up to watch it. Whatever you're doing. I hope you watch this fight because this is serious boxing. 10 ounce gloves. Pro fighters now. Two YouTubers. Or so we thought they were. Who are now pro boxers. And they're going to go at it in a ring. No headgear. Like I said, 10 ounce gloves. Someone is getting knocked out. And Eddie Hearn keeps repeating it again and again. I mean, the promoter of his calibre on this fight. You know, he promotes AJ. And he's promoting the, the Joshua Diaz. Ruiz. It's Ruiz. Yeah, anyway, so that's a big fight coming up. But... First, before that, we have Logan Paul v KSI. And I grew up watching these two on YouTube. Um, they influenced me to start YouTube in many ways. I mean, more Logan than KSI. KSI I knew of through like his gaming channels and the Sidemen, but I, I never really properly followed him. Like I would watch their, they would do videos playing GTA online, him and his crew. And I get, got to know them through that, but. I didn't really follow them as such and watch his videos. So I kind of knew of him, if you know what I'm saying. I, but Logan really influenced me, like the way his, you know, be a maverick, do it different, all this. Um, and of course, I, I was watching his brother, Jake Paul, watching his vlogs as well. So I came to know both of them through that. You know, two humble brothers from Ohio um, that one day got a video camera and went from there. Yeah, they were on Vine, then Vine died and they moved on to YouTube and the fame just kept coming and coming and KSI he's been building this brand for years you know JJ uh, as, as he's known as well and I started watching his videos really after he called out any of the pools uh, when he beat Joe Weller uh, that time and that's when everything changed for Logan Paul um, if we rewind it back think about it Logan Paul uh, very controversial, uh, the famous forest that he went to where he found a certain thing that wasn't pleasant and then the whole world hated him, they wished death upon him and all this and he was hated. Uh, but then, a few months later, JJ or KSI goes and calls the pools out after he beat Joe Weller and he challenged them, both of them, well, any of the pools, he didn't care. He challenged them to a boxing match. And so last year we had the first fight in August the 25th. And I was in Italy, I didn't even watch it. I didn't take it seriously, I was like, oh, it's going to be rubbish. But I, I thought Logan would win, um, despite the less, less boxing experience. But it didn't go that way, it was a draw. Uh, both think they should have won. They're, they're similar and different at the same time. They've got the same ego, same confidence to win, will to win and succeed which they have done and grown it from nothing. I mean, KSI, he started playing FIFA in his room and he just grew from there. Um, so these two guys, if you're a YouTuber, they're examples. I mean, maybe you don't want to completely be like them, but yeah, do it different, be a maverick, you know. Or KSI, the nightmare KSI, as they call him. Um, but yeah, this is the rematch. Can't wait for this. I mean, I've been watching the podcasts on True Geordie's podcast with both fighters individually of course they weren't together otherwise they probably would kill each other um, but yeah I was watching that and KSI he's got his technique down he's not scared to get hit anymore he will take punches because remember Logan is the bigger fighter he's taller um, but KSI is a beast like he's got stamina beyond belief and he's really close to his coach Vidal Riley also a boxer and YouTuber <laughs> Not on the same level, but yeah. So they've got a close connection. And when you work with a trainer, you need to know who you're working with. And they need to know you. And they've got that connection. Whereas Logan Paul has Shannon Briggs, Shannon the Cannon Briggs, former double heavyweight champion. Um, and yeah, very experienced, like knows how to win. He himself was trained by, like get a load of this, he was trained by Jeff Mayweather, 
Floyd Mayweather's uncle. Um, but then his title got taken away in a fight against another fighter that um, that Ray is it Ray? Yeah, Ray Mayweather was coaching after he he stopped coaching Shannon Briggs, and so Shannon Briggs lost his belt to a guy that his ex coach was training, um, and so Je it's Jeff, isn't it? Not Ray. So Jeff Mayweather is training KSI, and Logan is being trained by the guy who Jeff May Mayweather used to coach and train. Imagine that. So think about that way who's going to win, really. The student or the master, you know? It's, it's that kind of thing. It's interesting. And the press, press conferences were crazy. Logan was proper confident, but KSI didn't need to show anything, show off in any way. He just, he reckons he's going to win. I want Logan to win, but I don't want either to get injured. But, uh, but someone's going to get knocked out. But I do respect both of their grinds in different ways. Um, Logan's been through a lot. He's been hated by the world. And the first fight was his redemption. And I think KSI, he, he sort of saved Logan's career. And he, he was thankful for that after the fight when he was interviewed during that, when they were on, on the canvas, just after the fight, he was saying how it really helped his career, how it saved him. It took his mind off the whole problems and all the hatred and all that. And I really respect, like when that happens, when that happens, that level of ridicule, most people will just, you know, you've got two options. Like you can face the music or just sit in the corner crying. You know, that's the choice you got. And he did his apology where he always cried and all that. Nobody accepted the apology. And he knew that. And even after the fight, he said, I haven't redeemed myself yet. You know, he still feels he's got more to do. And I respected him more after what happened. Maybe not at first. I was like, oh, he's an idiot. He's messed it up. And he, he admits that. But that is what made me appreciate who he was more. Because then he realised he had to be more empathetic. And then he started his podcast. And I really started to understand what he did, and then I started my podcast. Us YouTubers just copying each other. I mean, think about it, from YouTube, and now they're boxing. And none of them can believe, but neither of them can believe where they got to. KSI is quite humble about it as well, like, from playing FIFA, being some nerdy kid, to this. Um, he's had a life on YouTube, they both have. Um, but this is serious. No acting here. You go out there and you knock someone out. And... KSI reckons he'll do it by the fifth round. Logan needs to do it in the first three because of KSI's immense stamina, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of True Geordie. I'm just sad that he's not commentating. Joe Weller will be commentating. The very guy that got knocked out or beaten by KSI in the fight that started with... Well, it didn't start with this. It was another fight with Joe and one of his mates, Theo, that started this whole YouTuber fighting thing. But think about it, I mean, Logan Paul, uh, Logan, Jake Paul, for me they're, they're bigger, they're more famous. KSI is also very famous, a big name. Um, but yeah, they're very similar characters. Like the type of crazy shit they do in their videos and all this. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see from the outside. And I'm, I'm into boxing because of this. Because the first fight I ever watched was uh, Pacquiao versus Mayweather. And that was a terrible fight. That was boring. I didn't appreciate boxing the way I'm appreciating it now. I mean, because this is coming from a different point of view of all the boxing community being like, who are these two YouTubers trying to do something that's none of their business? You know, they're trying to make it pro. And they're making money, though. And that's it. But they say that you can play many sports, but you don't play boxing. You know, you can play football, cricket, rugby, American football, tennis, but you don't play boxing, if you're not playing. No, there's no games here. It's kill or be killed, literally. It's that primal instinct to fight. Eddie Hearn said it in his podcast, on the True Jewelry podcast as well. You know, it's that primal instinct of fight. two people fighting in a ring. You know, the Romans did it in the Colosseum. People were fighting lions and stuff. 
gladiators, you know? It's that idea. And we're going to find out who gets the bragging rights. But I think it will be worse... I was, think, I was going to say it was going to be worse for KSI if he loses. Um, for Logan, he'll get over it straight away because of what he's been through. KSI's been through things too that have affected him. They've both got thick skins. So I think either way they'll get over it, but you want to see a winner. And you want to see how they're going to brag for years about this and just every time they're getting low on content, just show the fight again. Just like, look how I beat this guy. Um, and we'll see where they can take it from there. Logan's thinking about UFC, where he'll probably be killed. Shouldn't do that. In case I could be a pro boxer. For real. You know? Um, but the future is bright for these two. This is the future. I mean, the older generation, the traditional TV and that, Sky are like a bit scared of what's going on. I mean, do they know all the Suicide Forest stuff that Logan's been through? Maybe not. The, does it help when KSI reminds them of it and says it in interviews? No. Uh, because they're like the old man kind of channel, you know what I mean? Like the stat, the, the stoic of, of, of TV. Like classic, you know? So for these YouTubers to get onto that platform, it's amazing. And it'll be at the Staples Centre in LA on the 9th of November. Can't wait. I'm buzzing for this. Amazing. It's actually here. We never thought it was going to happen, and then it did. And here we are. For a long time it was in doubt and and up and you know, it was up in arms and all this. We weren't fully sh sure who was going to commit or who wasn't. But here we are. And it's going to be big. It's going to be a knockout. You're going to see someone on the canvas. And yeah. We, we've all seen the way Joshua lost having won many fights. Neither of these guys have really felt what it's like to be on the canvas, knocked out. They're going to find out. Because those terrorist gloves hurt. You get hit with one of them, you're going to know about it. Compared to headgear and 12 ounce. You know, it's just deadly weapons on the end of your arms. And, yeah. If you like boxing, maybe you don't like this. Because it's, they're not proper boxers to you. And, but they've been training as hard. They've got pros teaching them how to box. So what does that tell you? You know, they're not far off. Not far off at all. And yeah, this podcast is not all about them. It's about me as well. Um, but yeah, that, I just had to have a good chat about that because that's, that's exciting and things like that don't come around every day. YouTubers getting mainstream, really. And I just can't wait for what the platform will be like after this and what potential YouTuber has to go beyond YouTube. You know, when I'm starting this channel, this podcast, I'm thinking beyond, like, the opportunities this will give me, the skills I've inherited from this and from uni and that I've translated to this, you know, and when I think about it every now and then, I'm like, is this really worth it? Am I wasting my time while I'm doing something worth doing? And I'm always pinch, well, pinching myself that I'm actually doing it. I still can't really call myself a YouTuber. I feel like guilty saying that, I don't know. Because I'm not making millions like all these. But eventually I will do. I mean, all the copyright issues that I had over the past, videos getting blocked and stuff. And at the moment, I, until I get a certain amount of subscribers, um, my, vid my video, my, um, not my videos, but my channel, is not uh, not verified, I think. If that's the right word, you need a certain amount of subs. Um, yes, yeah, so I can't monetize it at the moment, but when I get enough subs, I will be able to. Because I'm just doing these live streams, you know, doing this podcast, doing this vlogging. It's all in one, you know. Uh, different area, different, slightly different, but all under the umbrella of being a YouTuber. And I want to stay versatile not get comfortable in one lane. You know, I tried making a bit of music manually, like myself, you know. There's, there's no production in that, it's just me. And yeah, that kind of worked. Uh, I've got to take that to another level if I really want to progress with that. But yeah, this is YouTube, it's what I do. Um, and since the podcasts, it's been more self-reflective and thinking about 
what can I do and the impact I can have and how I can help others with this, through this, you know, like Logan Paul says, be a maverick, do it different. Uh, I'm trying to do it different, yeah. No one's trying to be the same as anyone else. Who wants to be? I mean, I'm different anyway. It's got to accept that. I mean, think about my last vlog about ableism and, yeah, it's still a thing that gets on my nerves, but some people, it's just, un un people are unaware sometimes. And you can't blame them for that. Um, it's life. Like Frank Sinatra says, that's life. And what's really uh, been interesting is the reaction people have had from this Joker movie. Uh, it's just insane. About going with mental health and these problems. But society has really been impacted by this film. Because the way one person could get so many people to follow him and, uh, you know, believe in what he believed in whether it's good or bad. I mean, it was bad in the film. Oh, it was bad and horrific and, you know, but it's like to inspire people in some way. And it did do that, a movement of some kind. And we, people were all for that nowadays. That's all we seem to be doing as people against the government and just has given up hope. They might as well be playing with blocks of Lego and throwing them at each other and having food fights because they are children, all these politicians, and they're not going to change, they're not going to get better. Because here it's just gone to the dogs, in terms of politics. Um, what political stuff has they done, apart from talking about Brexit? You know, they haven't actually done any politics, whatever that may be, or run the country, they haven't done that. They've forgotten about us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't, politics isn't my thing. For a time it was when I was at uni, but why bother, like they're all idiots. No offence if you want to be a politician, but um, not idiots, but they're just selfish. How can I care for the people if they don't live amongst the everyday person? And the film Joker was really a play on people who were let down by the system, forgotten about, not cared for in any way. And what happens to them in retaliation or as a result of... I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Joker kind of scares people because as a movie it shows you that everyone's on the edge of going that way everyone's on the edge it's like when you see a homeless person certain people they want to look away because they don't want to think that that's a possibility in their life and in some cultures they don't like homeless people because they think it's like it might put bad luck on them to have them around and things like that and take take it from the, the view of this movie you know, it's a guy that's downtrodden by society it just goes over the edge and that's it, People, a lot of people are close to that, whether they know it or not I don't know um, and yeah, in the film you're like yeah, anyway, this is a spoiler alert guys, but in the film when he shoots those guys, you're like, okay serves them right, but maybe just knock them out, don't just shoot them eight times while they're already down you know, um, but they're that's the nature of the Joker, it's like, there's, you know, you want to stand up, defend yourself, but then there's a line that you don't want to cross, and by God, he crossed it. And then you shoot De Niro in the face, and what a moment in movie history, an instant classic, in your name like Joaquin Phoenix, he's going to make a classic like that. It's inevitable. Legendary actor of his calibre, does Heath Ledger proud? He would be proud. And this is a different version of the Joker. It's how he became what's pushed him over the edge. The one slip that made him turn into what he is. And you think it's a superhero movie? No, like I said, it's about society and about mental health and all these issues. And, yeah. Some people can relate to that. The feelings that he had, you know, getting counselling and all this. But to take it to that level, I mean... That's what the movie shows, and the era of, like, 1980s, it looked like a 1980s movie, and it felt like a classic. I mean, there's films that, at the time, don't always seem as classic as that, but over time, they do. I mean, look back at this film, if you look back at this film 10 years from now, for example, 30 years from now, you know, it'll be an epic classic. And I don't know if people have the same reaction, <laughs> younger generations, you know, I watch an older movie and maybe what I'm thinking about that movie 
isn't the same about someone from that era. You know, take a film like Apocalypse Now. I mean, I told my uncle I hadn't seen that. He's like, what? If you've not seen Apocalypse Now, Marlon Brando, Dennis Hopper, Robert Duvall, Martin Chin, you know, and you probably don't know that film, probably know some of them actors. Um, but, you know, that's a classic. But maybe at the time it wasn't so popular because it was about the Vietnam, well, people think it's about the Vietnam War, but as a film it's also about the mental decline of one person. You know, in this case Marlon Brando, one of the best actors of all time, who changed the game in acting. He changed the game completely because before him there was no realism to a leading man in the movie. They were all polished and perfect in every way. The best hair, the best looks, you know, but he was different. He had that, but then he was sensitive and real at the same time and complex as, as most of his characters show that. And that changed the game. You know, from that film, from, no, from seeing him in films, people changed the way they acted. They chose to act in, in a different way based on what they saw from Marlon Brando, a legend of our time. And yeah, in old age he got, uh, you know, he had a lot of issues and alcohol and drugs and everything, but he was still that legendary actor in that time and a lot of controversy surrounds him, but as an actor he was top draw. And a movie like that just, even though it was set in Vietnam, it was about his mental state and the state of many people at that time who'd been to war and come back and what it does to you and all that. And a lot of films do that, but not as good as that one. And obviously the music is just quality. It's just a crazy movie. Like it, make, it takes the bad and just makes it crazy, I don't know. There's things that you shouldn't find funny in it. Or, you know, things that today you can't show in a movie with that kind of music and show it in that way. But there you go. I mean, the Joker was a big no-no for a lot of companies and there were, and people in general was like kind of scared by it. I mean, yeah, he shot those guys and all that. But I mean, the cinema was shouting, yeah. I don't know why, he's doing a bad thing, but you want to see the character progress. I, I don't know. Um, I'm probably the only crazy person in there, but you don't know whether to laugh or cry in that movie. You don't know how to act. And a lot of people can't get their head around it and what it means. And it made me think about mental health and how society kind of puts people like that to one side and it goes back to ableism as well you know just because someone has something is different to someone else shouldn't change the way they're treated I mean if they're violent yeah in his case um, but they didn't do the right thing he was off his meds and all this and the government just uh, didn't care and maybe it's not that bad today but it is certainly not that good in that sense um, that treat equally, you know, I mean, I go to my GP there and know nothing about my condition other than what they've read in a book. Um, so they're not experts in that sense. They're just a GP. Like how I, if I get a cold, it might not stay longer than a normal person. And for me, if it's more than 10 days or a week, I need antibiotics to stop it getting worse, you know? But the average person might not. They might just be on paracetamol, it's fine. Uh, things like that, so. I mean, doctors that are considering the patient, you know, are experts in that area, that field. And it's not always the case. Um, just an interesting movie and it really got me thinking. More than any other movie I've seen in a while. Like I said, an instant classic. An instant classic that doesn't come along that often. And we've been needing a good movie. There's been, you know, I went to see the new Terminator, that was terrible. You know, I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah, that was terrible. Because people want action now, like in front of them. They want everything there and then. And they're obsessed with this. Like, but for people that make movies like that, to think we're all like that is wrong. Because we're not. Some people, they'd rather watch a three hour podcast and listen to real stories than watch a condensed one hour and 50 minutes movie. Or whatever it is, you know. They want things there and then, like straight away. But not everyone is that. Not dumb, I'm gonna say dumb, but like that basic in that sense. Of, yeah, those films are great, I love them too. But sometimes you want something that makes you think and relate to your own life. Not directly with the Joker, but 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it really got people thinking. And then you watch Fast and Furious 8, and, and then it's just loads of bald, muscly guys fighting each other with the occasional car, and loads of explosions. So, this is what we're facing today. And no, no, nobody can compete with Marvel, you know? Nobody. <laughs> Um, and those people relating to those movies too. They do have things that we relate to in those movies. Marvel more than any other, really. Like, you've got people crying in the cinema. And they're sharing that experience, though. That's the difference between watching it at home on Netflix and in the cinema with loads of people you don't know. You're sharing that moment, that feeling. However different or old or young the people in that cinema are, you know? And you share it, and that's the beauty of cinema. Um, and movies like that really do it justice. Joker, that is. So, yeah, guys. I'm currently doing a 10-day football challenge where every day for 10 days you post a football-related, Padger football-related picture um, and you nominate someone. Uh, I was nominated, so then I'm doing it. So today was day three. Yeah, day three of posting a picture for 10 days every day. Um, yeah, and you don't explain any of the pictures. Just 10 football photos, you know, and so on. 10 nominations, but zero explanations. And it's really memorable, like the photos I'm bringing up here and the photos I've found of all the years I've been playing. A lot that my, my dad has more of the photos than I do from when I won the championship in 08 and 09, in those early years, uh, those formative years, um, and I'm back with some of the same teammates that I won all those trophies with, um, and we're still doing it, we're still playing, we haven't won as many trophies, but we're getting there, um, and we're a team and you enjoy, it. you win or lose together, win and lose, draw, whatever, and off and on the pitch, that's what makes you a unit, and that's what most teams are and this sport over the years we've lost people we've got new people but we never forgot who we, who's moved on or who we've lost you know and it's difficult but it's it's the nature of life and this sport just makes us appreciate what we've got and to make the most of it because tomorrow is never promised not every day is Sunday you know all these phrases ring true in a sense and this sport is will go on forever regardless of who's come and gone you know and it's made so many lives um it's a family is what it is and i said it before um for what we've been through recently it's not been easy but this kind of thing is great to share our memories as a sport as a family such a big family all around the world you know and it's just great to be a part of, and I've said it many times, football is life, you know. Uh, the world is round and so is the football. Because a lot of people said to me, why do you like football? Well, that's why. It's that simple. Um, it's more than just a sport. Like, yeah, normal football, there's money in it. There's no money in this. Um, for us players, we're doing it for the love and the passion. And that is a real sport. You can't say that these guys get in have many millions a week actually care. No offence, but you know what I mean? They're having a strop and then getting paid that much money. Come on, I mean, what is this world about? I mean, if I got paid, this sport would be a lot, it wouldn't be as fun, it'd be a lot more commercial and all that. Um, I'd love to get paid, don't get me wrong. I'll be rich, are you kidding me? However many years I've been playing, like 12 years, what is it, I don't know. Ages, I'd be rich. You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, it's for the passion. We do it for the love of the sport, and to get new people along, along the way to join the family, and we've done that many times, and we still do. And we sh we share it every game, win or lose. You know, um, we're all friends at the end of the day. On the pitch is war, but other than that, you know. It's not just sport. You don't play it, you live it, in a sense. 
and we certainly do. And I've had so many videos, vlogs, including Pacha Football. I'm going to have many more, but I hope you guys can really appreciate it. The way I, it's difficult, of course. Um, but Pacha Football, it breaks down the barriers of ableism, which you've all suffered. And we're, we're normal people, you know, trying to make the most of you know, difficult situations. Make make better than the average person. Not make the most, you know. It's not like, oh, bless them, you know, no. It's like to give yourself purpose. Everyone needs a purpose, you know. I'm not saying that people didn't before, but like, that motivation, you know, that we'll do, we're in this together. And so what if loads of everybody people just stare at us and detach themselves because they feel a bit awkward or weird? Like, it was 2019, get your head out your own ass. You know, there's so many people that are just too ignorant. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going on, on, on a, on a, what's it called, I'm getting in a rut now, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying, like, it breaks down the barriers and people involved, they come to understand that everyone is different, you know. But we're all human at the end of the day. <laughs> And it does break down that barrier. Not always, <laughs> but I hope it can, and it has been. And gives you that confidence. As a disabled person, you haven't always got that from a young age, but you develop that with things like this where you realize you're not alone, you're not the only one. And it goes back to Joker, doesn't it? I mean, in that he, he felt he was, the, he was alone, you know? No one to speak to about his issues, his thoughts, you know, properly anyway. Uh, but in Pacha Football you've got that and any, any, any doubts I had about anything to do with my life, like getting a new wheelchair, funding, you know, mobility from my car and all this. Um, thanks to the people around me I've come to know more and we've exchanged information with people about things that maybe they didn't know about and vice versa. Um, different disabled families, families with disabled people in the community in this Padre football family, you know, family, not community. It's another level. And, yeah, I, however you put it, ableism is as real as racism or sexism or anything like that. And I talked about it enough on the other podcast. Um, but, yeah, I'm not this... I'm not, like, a... I don't know, I'm not a... This, like... I don't know what, how to put it, but like, I'm not going to go mad and just campaign and all this and go, I'm not an activist, like, don't get it twisted. Just because every disabled person experienced or experiences ableism doesn't mean we're all activists and we're going to stand up and go, yeah, human rights, rights for disabled people. No, we, everyone has their own thing. Not every individual should do the same thing, you know, just because, what? Oh yeah, you, you should do that. I've seen this guy in the Paralympics. He did this. Maybe you should do that. Um, shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do my own thing. I have to look at someone else and go, I want to be, you know, I want to copy them. You've got to make your own... You've got to be a maverick. Uh, do it different. And... <laughs> certainly do. I certainly do. At Pouch of Football, we certainly do. Compared to any other sport. <laughs> no sport is that crazy. You've got to be a bit mental to play Pajia football, you've got to be, have some screws loose, like boxing. It's all out war, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, I'm not, I'm not an activist. Um, I'm not going to make every video about, like, ableism and treating people right and all this and, you know, trying to send a message. Sometimes I'm just documenting life, my life, a day in the life. That's what a vlog is, you know? I'm not going to start a campaign every time though I do know some people who can and have the power to we all have the power to but in different ways influence people in different ways and together you make a difference you know I'm on the bus I've got my headphones on probably most people are staring at me thinking wonder what he's thinking you know what I mean I'm looking at them thinking I don't care to be honest what you think of me or what you're thinking 
in the terms of ableism, like, yeah, if I'm rude to someone, then, you know, that's different. Like, in that sense, like, I'm not going to offend people for no reason, like, what are you looking at? No, it's just, like, there needs to be more understanding of people that are different, like, get over it. It's 2019, there's so many campaigns for people being different in different ways and different beliefs and stuff. But all you've got to do is have morals, you know? Murdering is wrong, that's it, you know? It doesn't matter what religion you follow or anything, you know? You can differentiate between right and wrong, whether you're an atheist or not. Able-bodied, disabled, whoever. But the thing is, in society, the word disabled puts someone like with a disability lower than someone who hasn't. But it's just a word society uses. But it's wrong. It should be a different word. I don't know what word, but yeah. And don't just assume things about people like us. People like us? What am I saying? But someone that's different to you, don't assume that they don't have the similar issues you do or they don't do normal things that normal people do. Don't assume they don't, you know. Don't just assume because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm generalising, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, and you don't know someone until you talk to them, really. I mean, I've learned that a lot. Like, don't, before you've even known someone, don't judge and don't treat them in a certain way you wouldn't want to be treated until you know the full picture. I mean, take the other day, um, Penny Mc McGuinness, that um, No Lighty, No Likey, that actor. Actor? Presenter? From, uh, what's that show called? Where? I can't remember what it's called. Take Me Out, Take Me Out. The presenter of that, his wife, has two autistic children and has a disabled badge. She was parking in the disabled bay and out of the blues, this normal, this able-bodied guy said, what are you doing parking there? You're not disabled, you can't park there. Not knowing that the kids had a hidden disability. And that is another thing, like, you're able-bodied, right? And you're saying, you shouldn't park there. But if you've got no affiliation with anyone who's disabled or you're not disabled yourself, what do you care that someone is parking in that bay? And as a matter of fact, they've got a reason to because they've got two children with a hidden disability. So who are you to tell them not to park there? You know, what, what, who are you, the police, you know? What, I mean, I don't know. Me personally, I can say that. I can be pissed off at everybody person if they actually don't have a badge and no reason to. And in a disabled bed, I can be pissed off and have a go at them because it's my place to. Or my dad or my mum or my brother on behalf of me or vice versa. But don't tell me that if you've got enough, no affiliation to a disabled person that you're doing that, you know? You know, it's not, it's not for you anyway, so why do you care? And that just really annoyed me, that situation. You don't judge a book by its cover, like, someone might have a hidden disability that you wouldn't know, and that's why they're using a disabled bay. Like, if they, if, you know, if they have vertigo, for example, like my granddad does, you would need a disabled badge, because if you have that when you're driving, then, you know, it's not good. <laughs> And you can't be far from where you're going because of that, the nature of that uh, condition. So not everyone has an obvious physical disability. And that's the thing I've learned as well. So you can't just put everyone in one basket. You know, why, why they, they put homophobia and racism in the same boat, I don't know. They're completely different issues. Yeah, it's about someone being different, but completely different thing entirely, you know, like, disability is too, yeah, you know, so, that's my view on that, that's my take on that, and, well, well, we were talking about Logan Paul KSI and we got here, back to ableism, who would have thought, I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty though, guys, and, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually good at the game again, I think, the only thing is I can't even press L3 to run, that's the only thing. That's the only button I can't press. But like the L3 button is just awkward for my thumbs. Because they're not the best, I haven't got the best thumbs in the world. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm quick on my day. It's just, I can't press the button to run. So other than that, I'm just strolling around the map, killing people casually. As Well, it, it, you know, it's Call of Duty. Uh, if you're sprinting around, you're not going to turn quickly and not 
see a guy there and he's gonna shoot you. And that's me talking about a video game now. Like, what, what am I on? <laughs> All in one podcast. I mean, the early days of my podcasts, I had it planned out of different things, but now I'm just talking on what I've experienced or came, come to know or learn or feel in the last week. You know, I'm trying to keep them weekly. Uh, I was going to do this on Tuesday, it's now Thursday. And here we are. Um, and yeah, I went out yesterday, did another vlog. Hadn't vlogged since early October when I went to Camden, like properly anyway. Did one, I did one last week when I got the Raiders t-shirt, jersey. And yeah, um, I'm not going to talk about Tottenham because it's a mess at the moment. It's not fun to watch my team, sadly. Ericsson has to go. Ericsson needs to leave. I don't know what he's done or not done, but he has to leave. For Tom Gunn or they're too old, get him out. You know, get him out. Foyf Sanchez, you've got to do the job. We need a new right back and we need a new left back. We need Trippier back for sure. Um, I mean, face it, Aurier's not up to it for me. And Danny Rose is good, but we need better. Um, we need to improve everywhere. Um, we need someone to steady the ship. Getting rid of the manager is unfair after all he's done for us. But I'll leave that for another video, really. Talking about football. But yeah, guys, Call of Duty as a kid, that was the game. That was the game that almost cost me a lot of exams and a lot of my friends, and it was our social thing we did. Like 16, 17. You know, maybe some people have grown out of it now, but I'm doing it for a live stream, so I'm not wasting my time. If you're sitting in your room playing the game, you're not live streaming. Good on you, whatever, but have fun. Take your time off. But I, I do it and I share it with the world in terms of live streaming. Um, and I make videos out of it now. I've started editing them and all that, which I never did before. I just did the live stream, two hour, three hour live stream now. I'm condensing it a bit, and like I said, with the vlogs, I'm shortening them, trying to keep them short, less than 10 minutes. The one I'm working on now is less than five, I think, or it could be under seven. But yeah, you see, so de I'm developing things there, moving on. Um, there's videos I've made in the past that I felt better about than the recent vlogs. I haven't felt like I made a decent vlog for a while. Or well, maybe that one in Camden, but before that, didn't feel like I a, made a proper decent one since maybe earlier in the summer. But then, even before that, I had a long time of not feeling that my vlogs were that good. When, for what they are, they're good. Um, but I just struggle with the meaning of them sometimes. Like I make a vlog and I think, what's the meaning behind this one? But then, like I said earlier, it doesn't always have to be a meaning. I don't have to be an activist in every video and talk about my disability and stuff. You know, I can make a video about living with my condition and all that, but, you know, what's the point? That's for someone else to do and do it well. I mean, I, I'm not in the, in the game of getting people down. I'm in the game of realism. And I normally just drone on about how I feel every day because everyone's got problems in different ways. And I'm not asking for sympathy, so I'm going to just talk about what, what I go for on a day-to-day -day basis in that detail because some people can relate but not everyone and it's not my thing to do it's not something I would love to do therefore I don't uh, I might do this to get views but not necessarily for my own need in that sense and this is venting now while I'm talking a podcast really helps with that it's therapy if you like someone to talk to you know that where you can just talk and that's it and I'm keeping it real. A few podcasts I did. I, I named one Real Talk, didn't I? So yeah, but I hate to say it, but Christmas is actually upon us. And it's too early to say that. And the Christmas adverts are out. The music hasn't started yet, but it will. Yeah, guys, so, as I was saying, Logan Paul KSI, it's a big fight. <laughs> and I 
I can't wait. I mean, I'm a YouTuber as well, really, if I think about it. And seeing something like this is just inspiring because it makes you think that there's always more. You know, you can always take it a step further, get to the mainstream. I mean, I've been in the local paper before and stuff. And I think BBC Match of the Day, coming down to do a, a bit of filming at football. And you've been on camera before there. Um, but I'm used to it because I'm in front of a camera almost every day with you guys. And yeah, I'm changing the way I do the vlogs, but like I was saying, I haven't been happy with them for a while. And I look back and there's some videos that I was less experienced, but I just felt were better. I don't know why, and I'm learning more, yeah. And I'm a completely different person, or vlogger that is, to last year. I mean, in the beginning there was more of a persona, I was trying to be cool. It's cool, dude. Then I realised, let me get more real. Why not? I mean, I took a page out of Casey Neistat's book, you know. It's got to be a documentation of my life. A vlog. What I'm feeling in that moment. And then translate it through music and visual imaging and sound and things like that. And setting the tone from each vlog. Um, but it's difficult to capture how I feel in that moment and how I feel when I'm editing. Because it might be different. And unless I'm in the moment can't really think about how I was feeling at that moment. That's why it's difficult to... Well, it's better to film one vlog, edit, and then film another, not film two or three and then go back, like I did over the summer in Italy. I had more fun than I could ever imagine the last two years in Italy. The vlogging has been crap. When I've been on holiday, the vlogging goes downhill. But the scenery is amazing. The people, the fun, the craziness is how I want to live every day, but you can't. Um, but that's why we go ham out there. We go non-stop when we're in Italy. We, we drink for days, you know. <laughs> We've got stories for days from Italy. And all the friends I've got, they're great. I mean, it's different to here. I don't know, don't know what it... I can't put it down to words. But yeah, I've got some quality friends out there. And one of my best friends is actually mo moving to London. So that's been the big thing that's been going on. And she was in my last vlog when I was in Camden, that vlog, if you've seen it. Vlog 83. That was a great day. <laughs> Didn't translate. Well, it was a good vlog. It was a good, I love Camden for vlogging. It's just so quality. One of my favourite places. I kid you not. <laughs> However crazy it is. And some people don't like it. They like, think it's dodgy. Well, maybe it's dodgy. But there's all odd characters. I'm an odd character. So I fit in perfectly there. In that sense, <laughs> you know, I don't feel out of place there. I don't feel as much ableism there. Maybe from tourists, but like in general, I don't. I don't get that feeling. I just fit in more. And now there's a lot more of celebration of being different. But 20, 30 years ago, there wasn't. <laughs> um, if you had mental health or physical disability, you were just outcast in some ways. Um, and it, I can't imagine what it was like growing up 20, 30, 40 years ago with any sort of disability because you just wouldn't fit in. You wouldn't be allowed to. Uh, whether that's right for me to say that or not. But that is the reality. And yeah, my voice is going, maybe it sounds like I'm getting emotional, I'm not. So don't be sympathising. It's just my terrible voice. I hate my voice. I hate my voice. <laughs> Yeah, but um, that's just me, and I've got to keep it real for the vlogs. In the beginning I wasn't, it was more of a persona, trying to be cool and pretend and all this. Like, yeah, I go out every Friday and all this. I don't, I'm, who does? Every, like, every single Saturday or Friday. And I enjoy my job too much to get to Friday and be stressed, like other people, unfortunately, who do jobs that they hate every day. I've got passion and I do what I love. Not everyone has that opportunity. They're at a stage where they have to make money to get to another level, to get somewhere, they think. And a certain amount of money will make, make you happy because without money you can't buy food, you can't pay your bills, you can't live in a house or a flat. You know, you've got, if you ain't got money to an extent, you're not happy, you're not living. You can't. I'm not saying being a billionaire is better than having a real proper family that loves you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that a certain amount of money will help improve your life. Stop you being homeless. So in that sense, yeah. And I'm enjoying what I'm doing. 
yeah, I get money from the government, get my disability benefits and all that, but I don't want to live on that. I want to make something on myself. And why did the government assume every disabled person like me just wants to sit at home and watch TV? We don't. Everyone has their normal ambition to be great in whatever they want to be great in, or or not in some cases, um, but to do what they want to do. And I enjoy what I want to do, so therefore, don't feel the need to go out every Friday night and get sloshed. Even though I love a drink, I love a drink. And when I can, I do, and when I get the opportunity, I do. Don't go mental, because the people around me don't go mental, they go crazy, yeah. But not completely off the wall mental. <laughs> um, that when I'm around my brother, I'm less mental, because he's a bit more mellow and calm and like mature, even though he's younger and everyone thinks he's older. Probably for that reason, because I'm more blasé about things. You know, but like I said in the vlog, I don't try to portray this fake image anymore. I did at first and I didn't reveal certain things. I talk about things more. Some things I won't say because you're a nosy bugger, it's a lot of you. Um, and yeah, that's fair enough, some things you don't say. And I will, never will. But other things like I'm getting more, I'm getting more realistic about what I'm saying in the vlog, so you can relate. Because even this fake person that, like, look at Logan Ball KSI. I mean, Logan particularly has this persona, but now he's getting rid of it. He's becoming more real, more like what's it when you think about your impact on others? More emotive, more yeah, and self-deprecating at the same time. You've got to be confident in yourself, but you've got to be able to laugh at yourself sometimes to be a bit self-deprecating, like most comedians are, you know? But don't put yourself down, that's for sure. Um, stay healthy, stay up, stay humble. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're working and you're hating your job, you're getting that money though, so don't worry. I mean, you've got to sacrifice to get somewhere, otherwise you'll never know. You've got to have it difficult before you can have it easy. You can't have it easy the whole time. And the place and the time for different things in life, to work hard, to have a boss, to be your own boss, you know. I can't sit in the office ever and have someone tell me what to do. Because for so many years at school, they're telling you what to do and you're like, screw this. You know, is there more to life than this? Yes, there is. In, in knowing when you finish school, you can do what the hell you want. But the, the responsibility of life, it's not a restriction, it's what keeps you sane in some ways. And pure freedom, people want it, but they don't actually know what it is. And when they have it, they go crazy. Pure freedom, we don't know what that is. You know, you've got, yeah, travel the world, whatever. But then, what are you actually gaining? I mean, you can meet someone down the pub that will tell you stories and you'll learn things, but until you actually see something, you don't know. But at the same time, travel the world, yeah. You're alone the whole time, technically in different cultures and stuff, maybe that's, that can help you relate to how someone deals with ableism, like when you're alone in the place, completely different and everyone looks at you funny, because they know you're from Europe, and this is like Asia or somewhere. But yeah, do what you want, I mean, there's time and place for different things in your life, but you're always learning, no matter what, and there's going to be a time where you can retire and just tell your grandkids stories about when you were young, how crazy you were and all that, because we all have that. <laughs> um, but that, don't forget to work, put in some work, otherwise at the end what's the point? Um, if I don't create in some way each day, like a video or something, I don't feel proud. Not proud, but like I feel guilty, you know, just make the most of it. Um, work hard though, don't forget to work, don't just have fun all the time, it's not, the fun's not worth it if you don't work hard and sacrifice to get there. I want to end this podcast now because I'm repeating myself I think, but you get the message, I hope. Do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Louisi21, there's only one. Um, I'm Gianluca Louisi, been your host once again. Thank you whoever supported me through the vlogs, the podcast, the gaming, the live streams, or all of it. And if none of it, then 
I don't care. Um, this is not for you. But tell your friends, tell your family, tell your friendly neighbourhood boxer uh, that Louise 21 for life. Yeah. That's it, that's all I got guys. That is podcast 23, done and dusted. Take it easy fam, peace. Everything's gonna be alright No woman left right No woman left right